All right, so here we go with VPNs in a nutshell. Um, effectively, here's just a loose topology. So we're going to connect two houses together. I'll say that my house is 192.168.2.0. Your house is over there at 192.168.3.0. We've got uh, the same or different providers. It really doesn't matter. But what you see on the outside of each interface, there's a, a router on my side. There's a, maybe a, an ASA firewall or something on your side. Notice that each of us has these different addresses. I've got 11111 on the outside of my router. You've got 2222 on the outside of your uh, your ASA. We're connected to the cloud. Who knows what's going on in there? We just know that ultimately we're connected. Now, um, there, there's obviously going to be additional addressing information with your service provider, which is going to be you know kind of like at the edges touching the clouds, but that's not really part of the story. To make a VPN work, you really just need uh, a couple things. The first thing is a crypto map. And this is probably the most important. You see, your crypto map is going to go on your outside interface, wherever the VPN is going to be constructed from. Typically, it's that outside interface. And your crypto map contains three things. Uh, the first is going to be, what do we encrypt? So for that, you're going to use an ACL. Some documentation will call it a crypto ACL, which sounds fancier than it really is. It's just an extended ACL that basically says, uh, you know, permit. IP traffic from where? 192, 168, 2.0. And for the sake of humanity, I'm just going to put a slash 24 there instead of writing out a wildcard mask. And then my destination is going to be 192, 168, 3.0. Once again, slash 24. So I'm basically saying, hey, router, if you see packets coming from 2.0 going to 3.0, he's like, yeah. I go, well, I want you to encrypt them. And to do that, you use something else called a transform set, which sounds scarier than it really is. Because all a transform set does is it defines some parameters for how to do IPsec. So I might say, use AES encryption and use SHA-1. It really doesn't matter what you pick unless you're you know, regulated by some foreign body, uh, I don't know, HIPAA, PCI, whatever. Um, but we could just roll with AES SHA-1. All that matters is it matches on both sides. So within my global config, I'll say, you know, uh, transform set, you know, my set, call it whatever you want, and make sure that it's, say, AES and SHA-1. Whatever you pick, just make sure that it's the same on both sides. The name of the transform set, not important. Um, and then finally, our third thing, and this is all that matters, is setting who your peer is. And the, the way that the logic works within the router is you're saying, hey, router, if you see packets from 2.0 to 3.0, anything in those ranges? He's like, yeah. Encrypt it with AES. And he's like, OK. And then I say send it to this peer, 2.2.2.2. That's all that's going on. And then on the other side, this guy just does the same thing. You have a crypto map on your outside interface. The crypto map's got three important parameters. The ACL, which is what to encrypt the transform set, which says how to encrypt it, and then finally a peer. And this says, who do I send that encrypted traffic to? At that point, the traffic gets encrypted, comes over here. We've got a matching entry for that dude in our crypto map. We'll go ahead and uh, you know, pop off the ESP header and then send in the unprotected data through there. And the same thing happens, obviously, in the other direction. Um, unencrypted traffic comes into the router, matches that uh, all the entries in the crypto map. It then gets encrypted as it comes out, crosses the wire to 2.2.2.2. When he sees it, he peels that ESP header, which is what makes it encrypted, and then passes it out clear text on the other side. So I hope that answers your question. I was starting to write an email, and I thought this would be way faster.